All right, so in this video, we are gonna be propagating some hydrangea cuttings, but not just any hydrangea cuttings. I'm really excited about this one. We are going back to our roots and we're gonna propagate the same hydrangea cuttings that I got off that same plant in Oregon. About three years ago, I think it was three years ago, maybe four, 2017, I think was the year, I made a hydrangea cutting video. It was the first hydrangea video that I did for you guys, and it turned out to be a pretty popular one. A lot of people followed the steps and were able to get cuttings rooting successfully, but I have had people come back to me and say, Mike, it didn't work for me. They all rotted. So in this video, we're going to answer those questions. We're going to solve those problems you guys are having, and we're going to answer some other questions that haven't been asked yet. Like, how long can you store these cuttings, and how do you store them? If you're traveling, you find the cuttings, and you got to get all the way back home. We're going to talk about that. So let's get going. All right, you guys are always asking me where I got those hydrangea cuttings in that original video about them I did like three or four years ago. Well, we're here again on the Oregon coast, just around Tillamook, and there's the nursery. Hidden acres. And look at the size of this dinosaur plant, man. That thing's like seven foot tall right there at the top leaf. Dang, that thing is so massive. What do you think, Allie? It's big. It is big, isn't it? Look at that, I love this stuff. Look at the texture going up and down that little branch there. This is that original hydrangea I got the cuttings off of, and there is that blue color. It's still earlier in the season though, it's, there's only like two blooms on the whole thing, but isn't that a pretty deep blue? I'm gonna see if we can get some more cuttings. All right, so we're back at the hotel room, and I've got these guys piled into two plastic bags on the way back and we're gonna shove them in the fridge now with a little bit of water I just put a little bit of water on these guys this is how you store cuttings these things have got to last for several more days in the refrigerator in plastic bags and then we're gonna take them out when we get home and get these cuttings stuck alright so I got these guys broken into half I just want to make sure that I can seal this bag up all the way I'll tie a knot seal it down put a little bit more water in there and then this is going in the refrigerator alright now let's talk about these cuttings so these are the same hydrangea cuttings I got off the same plant in Oregon. Now, we just got back from our family vacation, but this year we went a month earlier. So I was able to get them when they were just in beautiful vegetative growth and lots of good green material to take. And once again, the lady that works there said, go ahead, take all the cuttings you want. So what did I do? It was going to be several days before I got back home and was able to do anything with them. I just took the cuttings, I put them in a plastic bag, sprayed them with a little bit of water. In fact, I didn't even have my spray bottle. I just took a little bit of water off the tap and just sprinkled it around in there. And then I just sealed up the bag, just tied a little half knot in it, just like that. And then this whole thing went into the refrigerator while I was waiting to go home. It sat in there for several days in Oregon in our hotel room. And once again, as usual, we had a little oops. So we got all the way home. By the way, on the way home, I just threw them in our ice chest. I didn't put ice on them. I just put them in the top of the ice chest to keep them cool. And when we got home, we threw them in our outdoor fridge overnight. And of course, it was a little colder than it should be. And it actually froze some of the leaves. So once again, I'm up against the eight ball here. And I've got to figure out how to make these things root for you guys. So let's take a look at these right now. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that beautiful green growth. And it got a little curled up because it's been in that bag all that time. But this is what the refrigerator here at our house did. It froze those leaves, some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. But I've got plenty of green material up here, and I'm gonna get these cuttings to root. I'm determined. If you can see some of them, even up near the top here, you can see some frost damage from being in that refrigerator. It's a shame, but it's gonna work anyway. 
So once I realized exactly what was happening in the refrigerator, I quickly pulled them out, left them in the sealed bag, and just put them on my back porch, completely out of direct sunlight. In fact, they didn't even get any overhead light from the sky. They were just sitting on the back porch. And if you really think about it, that's all these cuttings are doing inside of a tote anyway. They're sitting in a humid environment in a medium. They can do the same thing in a plastic bag. It's not going to hurt anything. So I dug around and I found the tote that we're going to use. It's not the same tote because I've got some potting soil in that one. But we're going to use a clear plastic tote like we've used in the past. And I've got a piece of plexiglass that wasn't originally made for this, but it fits it perfectly. So I'm going to get all these things cleaned up. And we're going to get them ready to go. And I've even got the same 4-inch pots that I used for those original hydrangeas from that first video. We're going to use those pots too. So let's get everything cleaned up. And let's get going. All right, so let's start setting the stage. Now, I'm gonna use those little four inch pots, like I mentioned, and we're gonna fill them with fine fur bark. Now that's just a material that I have easy access to in my area because it's a byproduct of logging, which is a big industry around here. If you don't have access to that, you can use anything that drains well, holds a little moisture, and is relatively inert. You don't want to use soil. You don't want to use anything that has lots of bacteria or fungus in it. A good, well-draining potting soil will work, but don't overwater. If you're interested in exactly what I use, I'll put links to other videos I've done that describe this stuff to a T. Once we get the containers filled, then we're going to saturate these pots because we're not going to be watering these things while they're in the tote. We're only going to water the soil and then the plants after they're put into the soil before they go into the tote. So we want them fully saturated. Now, here's the caveat. You don't want to overwater if you're using peat moss or something that's going to retain too much moisture. I'm saturating this bark because it drains right through and I need it to be moist, but it's got lots of air spaces between it. If you're using standard potting soil without any kind of fertilizer in it, just standard potting soil that has a lot of peat in it and it holds a lot of water, you just want it to be lightly moistened. You might even want to wring it out a little bit. Remember, too much moisture and too much heat will kill your cuttings. The rooting hormone I'm going to be using is called Hormidin 3. And the only reason I'm using that rooting hormone is because I use it all the time for my rhododendrons and tougher to root plants. You can use any rooting hormone that you have available in your area. Hydrangea are really easy to root. In fact, I want to make another point here. So many of you have come to this channel based on a hydrangea rooting video that I did in late August, early September, where I put them on bottom heat. Now, that's what I did at that time because the temperatures were getting cooler. But you can root these things way easier if you just stick these cuttings earlier on in the summer. And I've got videos about that in the description down below. I'll put links down there for other hydrangea videos where I took the hydrangeas earlier on in the season. They'll root much faster. They'll get fully rooted before before the fall comes and you won't have to worry about bottom heat. The only reason I did those other cuttings later in the season was because that's when I had access to those cuttings. So what we're going to have to do here now is I'm going to take that first top little snip off because that little soft growth isn't going to do much anything. And then we're going to cut down below this node here, just below it. And then we're going to strip those two bottom leaves off. Now I'm going to come back and trim that up even more here so I can dip some hormone into a freshly trimmed area and then we'll just stick that cutting. The last thing we'll do here though is we'll cut the leaves in half. A lot of people ask me why do you cut those leaves in half and it's for several reasons. One, it's to save room in the propagation tote. You can put more cuttings in. Two, it helps decrease the amount of respiration that the plant does. It can't lose as much moisture from the leaves when there isn't as much of a leaf surface to lose moisture from. 
On this one, you can see this side, the leaf actually got froze and kind of burnt by that refrigerator cold area, but we still got one good leaf here, so I'm gonna snip it just above that node, and we're just gonna get rid of that leaf there. And then right below this node here, pull those little dead leaves off, and there's gonna be our cutting on that one. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these worked up and we'll get after sticking them in the pot. So I ended up with five beautiful cuttings here, and you might be asking, well, why did you leave just two leaves on this one, but then you've got the top part on this one? Well, you know, nothing in nature is perfect, guys, and I like to experiment with different things. We'll come back and see how one roots versus the other. I like to try different things all the time. You know, it's, you know, with nature, it's kind of like about. You know, there's nothing perfect. There's, you know, there's ideal, Henry. There's nothing perfect about it. It's just, there's an ideal situation and then there's, you know, a broad range of what will work outside of that. So anyway, we've got these beautiful cuttings. We don't need all eight of the pots. We're gonna stick these guys. Let's do it. All right, now I know some of you are gonna say, Mike, you need a dibbler of some sort. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, just so we don't knock all the rooting hormone off of these guys. Because there are, whether you guys understand this or not, there are dibbler police out there and I get called out by them on a regular basis on this channel. All right, so now we've got our rooting hormone that I showed you, and we're just gonna take these little guys, I just snipped the tip off just to get it right down to some fresh new green material. Might even dip it in a little bit of water there, and then we're just gonna dip it in that rooting powder. And there it is, that's that Hormidin 3. I know I'm gonna get that question. So by dibbling this, we're able to set that down in there without knocking all of the rooting hormone off of the cutting. And then we'll just kind of firm it in and we're good to go on that one. I'm gonna go through the rest of these and we'll get it finished up. We had five cuttings and we've got six. Well. That's just good for us. Now you see me packing these down in a little bit, but the reason I'm doing that is because this fine fur bark material is so loose and airy and I want good contact with the actual cutting. If you were using something like peat here and it was holding on to a lot of moisture, or it was, you know, it's a finer particle, you don't want to pack it too tightly. You want air to be able to get down in there around the cutting. And now I've got two extra pots for something else. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is just throw a little water over these guys. No, it's not gonna be enough to really rinse off any of the rooting hormone. I just wanna get everything kind of wet, the leaves and the stems and the surface of the rooting medium. That's it. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is put our cuttings in our tote. We'll take this little plastic lid off here and we'll set all these cuttings right down inside. Now, if you notice, like I said, I'm not gonna water these guys. God willing, I'm not gonna water these at all, but you do have to keep an eye on your cuttings. You don't wanna just leave them be and not look at them, not watch them, not see if they need anything to be adjusted. However, if you do this right and you put them in the right place, you're not gonna have to touch these things at all. You're not gonna have to take the lid off or do anything with them until after they fully rooted. And we're talking four to six weeks here. So we're gonna put this lid on. And you can see, I wanted to show you, there's little bits of moisture down in the bottom there. It doesn't have a lot of water or anything. I may put a little more down in there. Probably not though. Let's just say for right now, I'm not gonna. There should be plenty of moisture. 
but this lid here doesn't seal 100%. It sits down all the way around the edge, but there's probably, you know, a hairline gap between this and the tote because this isn't made for the tote but it's not enough to matter it's going to build up lots of humidity in there in fact i can already see it building up humidity down on that plexiglass the next thing we really need to do is get this in the shade and we got some things to talk about guys all right so let's talk about this for a minute guys because this has become a point of contention here on this channel Yes, this is going to be a little bit of a tongue lashing, but you know, hey, some of you deserve it. I've done a ton of propagation videos on this channel, and the one thing that I've always stuck with, I've stuck to my guns on, is that these cuttings need to be in a place where there is no direct sun, but lots of overhead skylight. So for some reason, this year in particular, I have been getting tons of people on here saying, I did everything that you told me to, Mike, and my cuttings rotted and they died. What's going wrong? Then they got the emoji that's crying and water is pooling all over the place. And that's probably half their problem is they've got water pooling all over the place. But the two biggest reasons that you guys are killing your cuttings is too much moisture and too much heat. Now you saw, I didn't water these once they were in here. I didn't put lots of water in here. It's just enough. The moisture from the rooting medium and whatever was on the sides of the container and the bottom is gonna evaporate and create a very humid environment, close to 100% humidity in there. So you don't need a lot of moisture. You just need just enough, just enough moisture. Now, the other thing is heat. You cannot ever let sun touch this container. If the direct sun, the, the rays of the yellow sun touch this container, it will become an oven. It will immediately, I mean, I'm talking within minutes, the sun will cook everything inside of here. And then don't come back to me and say, what do I do now? Because I'm gonna tell you, you dump them all and you go back out there and take more cuttings. Because once that's happened, and I know I've got videos in the past where I actually cooked my cuttings and then ended up getting some to survive. So, you know, if you want to keep moving forward, cool. But you would be so much better off if you just dump them and start over again and then put the toe in a place that never gets direct sunlight. I can't say that enough, guys. So let me show you just what I'm talking about here. And I've got some other projects going on over here. Don't worry, those are coming down the road, but you can see the line from the sun. Now I've got a 14 foot tall pole barn right here. And so, you know, I've got a nice shadow casted on here, but you can see the sun just comes straight across. It never will hit that toe. Now, if you'll notice something in the summer, the sun actually rises somewhere over here. And in the very early morning, I'm talking like eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, you might get the dimmest little bit of sun right there, but it's still really cool. It's way too far down on the horizon and it doesn't affect anything over here. But you can't have the sun. As a rule, you cannot let the sun touch this thing because it will just cook it. But you do want lots of overhead skylight. Now I've got some big fir trees right around here, so they're blocking some of the skylight, and that's not ideal, but there's enough skylight. There's plenty of skylight, as you can see, to give these cuttings what they want, and I know that because I've rooted lots of cuttings over here on this side of my building. Now I wanna say something. I've had lots of people come on here and tell me, I don't have a place to put these cuttings. I don't have a north side of the building. Well. <laughs> If you've got four walls, you've got a north side of the building. And if you can't find a good spot to put these things, you're just not being creative enough. Guys, listen, all you need to do is build something. You can take a piece of wood and lean it up against this thing so that it blocks the sun and then build some sides. You can build a simple, small structure with a couple little sides. You could do this out of one sheet of plywood, just a lean-to and a couple sides and it will completely block the sun. The sun will never, the rays will never hit this thing. You can make it work. You can even do that and put the whole structure in full sun as long as it, that structure is blocking the rays from hitting the plastic. Now I know I'm gonna get one or two comments on here saying, why are you yelling at me? And I'm yelling at you because you need it. All right, so this tote's been over here sitting out of the sun 
for probably, I don't know, five minutes now, and you can already see, look at that, you can already see the humidity building up in there, and this is what we want. This is the environment we want. Now remember, these cuttings were taken days ago. I took these, what is it, today is Saturday, and I took these cuttings, I think, on Tuesday. And yeah, it was Tuesday. They've gone through a refrigerator. They got burnt a little bit by some frost in the refrigerator. They sat out on my back porch. They went on a road trip in a cooler. These guys have been through a lot, but they're still gonna be just fine. And this is what we want, just humidity a light level of humidity on top nothing's over watered i will come back and check on these guys almost daily because i'm insane and i can't help myself but uh i am determined to get these to root for you so that i can show you how to do this and that it really does work once and for all so today is july 26th we are going to come back here when something's happened let's go so today is august 4th and we started these hydrangeas almost two weeks ago and I noticed something here. I want to come out and show you real quick. We're not even close yet to getting these guys rooted fully, but they're on their way. But let's go ahead and take this lid off. Now, first of all, you can see some humidity built up inside of this, but I want to address some issues. So when I take this lid off, you can see right away, we've got some that are looking good and some that are looking okay, but not quite as good as the others. And here's the first one I want to point out to you. So this was near the top of the plant. You can see it's all top growth. That's a terminal bud right there. And it was just the most soft succulent growth on that part of the plant there. And those will usually do something like this. They'll wilt over easier because they can lose moisture easier. The wood is not as hardened off. And so what did I say? We're two weeks into this now. I'm just going to come in here and I don't want this to lose any more moisture from the top. So I'm just going to reduce the surface material where that thing can lose some moisture. Now we've got two nice healthy leaves. We've got a little bit sturdier wood further down that was a little more hardened off. And this might perk up a little bit more, but I'm still not worried about it. And that's what I want you guys to know. Don't worry about these guys at this point. They're doing just fine. This one started to wilt over. You can tell it was smaller growth. It's near the top of the plant. The leaves have turned up towards the light. We got buds in there just fine. Everything's green. It's looking good. This guy's not doing quite as well. Well, I wouldn't say he's not doing well, but the leaf is kind of drooped over. So what I'm gonna do here is just come along with these little pruners, just cut a big portion of that leaf right off of there. And by doing that, we're just gonna lose less moisture through that leaf. And now we still have good material down below here. Let's get this in. And it's got nice healthy buds right down in there on each side and we've still got a good shot of seeing something happen with that. We don't panic here. We just, we got a good shot at it still. This one was good, strong, solid material further down on the plant. And you can see it's still standing straight upright. The leaves are looking okay. Some of, you know, they kind of started drooping a little bit. But it's been hot around here lately. And that's another reason I want you doing this on the north side of a building where you get no sun at all, but you get overhead skylight. They need light but you don't ever want sun to hit these things. This is without sun hitting them. It's been hot, we've hit the hundreds. Well, 100 maybe, 101, something like that. And this is what these little cuttings are doing, but they never get sunlight hitting this thing. This is the healthiest looking of all. It was probably a lot further down on the branch. Everything's looking good. Now, as far as watering, because I know you guys are gonna have that question. The only thing I did one day, about a week ago, I was out here looking at them and I wanted to make sure that they were doing okay because they were starting to do what you're seeing here. And I just took the watering wand and I went right over it real quick one time. And that's why you see a little bit of excess water down there in the bottom. Not much, just a little bit. But I just went over it once real quick. I've not watered it since. You don't really want to water it. There's plenty of moisture down in there. It's built up here on the glass or the plastic in this case. And everything's looking good. So as long as you just keep this out of direct sun, but with a little bit of light overhead. And you know, if you live down in an area like the Southwest, you're probably not gonna be growing hydrangeas, but uh, you guys do get a little bit hotter. You might need some deeper shade. But as far as we're doing right now here, this is what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna panic. I'm just gonna let things go. We'll watch it. We've still got two, three, four weeks to go on these guys. So we'll come back when something more has happened. 
All right, it is September 18th, and I cannot wait to get this one to you guys. Let's go check it out. So here's our hydrangea. They have never left this box. They've never left this side of the building since we started this little project. This lid has stayed on the whole time, except for a couple times, and I want to explain that to you. Let's take a look. So when it comes to cuttings, people ask me all the time, how much do I water? How often do I take the lid off? Well, you know, there's a lot of questions that come around it, but what I want to tell you is you got to watch your cuttings. So when I took these cuttings, it was still really hot. The, the climate was really, really warm. We were in the middle of summer. And so I came out and I checked on them. And you can see with this guy back in here, see how he's kind of limping over a little bit? Well, it's firm, hard material now. It's not going anywhere. It's strong, it's solid, it's hardened off. It's good, strong material. In fact, it's rooted in. But in the beginning, it started kind of leaning over a little bit because it was a soft wood cutting. And it was so hot. So I didn't panic. I didn't worry about it. I Actually, you can see it happening to this one too. This one was further down on the stem, so it was a little tougher, a little stronger. It started doing it to this one, but this one actually turned out to be the better of the cuttings. Now these two guys right here, they actually lost their leaves, but look, they've got some roots on there and they're already starting to leaf out again. So here's what I did different this time. I watched them, it was really hot. They needed a little moisture. When I saw this start to happen after about a week, I took the lid off and I just took the watering wand and I just gently went over it real quick, maybe once or twice, not to water through the medium because I knew the medium had moisture down in the cups. I just went over the tops just to get the leaves moist, cool everything down in there. And then I just put the lid back on and I walked away. I did that again after about the three week point, somewhere in there. But that time I actually pulled each individual pot out. I set it right here because the bark was starting to dry out just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. I set them all out here and then I watered them and I let the water kind of soak through a little bit. And then I just put them back inside and I put the lid back on. That was it two times, two different times over that whole period of time, I actually got a little bit of water on them. The second time, like I said, I watered them, put them back in, and that was it. The rest of the time, I've left this lid right on here. Now, if you guys watched that video that I did several years ago, the, the first one with these exact cuttings from this exact plant, then you'll remember I never took the lid off, but also, if you'll remember, it's a different tote, and that tote that I used before has a sealed edge with like a foam material, and it completely seals the inside. This one doesn't. This one is just a plexiglass piece that I set on top, and so there's a crack. You see that? All the way down. And on the corners, it's really bad. It kind of lets a lot of this air escape through there. It's still okay here for the humidity. It keeps the humidity levels up, and you can see, got a lot of humidity built up in there. But it does let enough air flow out that I did have to watch this a little more carefully and I did have to add a little bit of water throughout the process. Just those two times though. All right, we got everything back in the hoop house. Let's sit down and talk about them. So this is what I've been waiting to see, guys. I am so nostalgic about this one because it's the original, the same exact hydrangea that I took those cuttings on, like I said, three or four years ago now. And I got that video, I'll put a link in the description below. But I loved that one and I wanted to get more cuttings off of that same one because I have to admit, I've over the years I've mixed up a lot of my hydrangeas and I'm not sure what's what anymore. I, you know, I get a little busy sometimes. But, and my main focus is the rhododendrons. But anyway, I got the cuttings and here they are again. I'm not gonna mix these up. So let's look at this biggest, fattest one. I've already been looking at them, I sneaked a peek. But I'm gonna show you what the roots look like in here. So I'm just gonna kinda put my hand right along that bark so not too much falls out. We're gonna take the lid off gently, keep the, look at that, look at that, look at that guys. Oh man, you just can't do any better than that. Look at all those roots, just pouring out all the way around. I absolutely love these guys. All right, let's put this lid back on here. This is gonna be my little mother. I'm gonna keep her and label her so that, cause I, she's the strongest. She's got the biggest roots. I'm gonna put a little label in there and I'll always know that this was that blue hydrangea. And if you guys have been following me for three or four years now, then you'll know we did this before with that original video. And then I posted updates over the next year. And it, the cuttings that I took then actually came out the next spring and grew pink flowers. 
is then we learned all about the pH of the soil turning the hydrangeas different colors and how you could take a blue hydrangea and it just turns pink. It is absolutely amazing to me. I just love that subject, but I got this off a of blue hydrangea. All right, this is number two. Let's see how it fared. And it's got some roots, not as many. I told you that other one was the best, but it's well rooted in. And it's going to root more and more. Now, remember, today is September 18th. And so, we're headed into cooler weather, especially with all these fires going on around here, these wildfires. It's been blocking the sun so much, it feels like a nuclear winter around here. The weather's gotten a lot cooler, and we're headed into October soon. So, these roots aren't going to do too much more. They'll, they'll do a little bit more in there, but really we're going to be heading into a time where the leaves are going to want to start falling off, and these guys are going to go dormant, and we're going to talk about that, how I'm going to store these through the winter. Let's look at this other big one here. And we got a little bit, not quite as much. See that little bits of roots all around there, around every side. There goes Henry. And one more. The other two don't have leaves. Ooh, look at that. He's got lots of roots. That one's actually doing really well too. Not as much on that side, but plenty of roots there. Doing really, really well. Now these two, with the leaves that fell off, they fell off because they overheated. But look at that. They grew roots and they're coming back just fine. And uh, I don't want to disturb them. I've already looked at them. There's a one or two little tiny dots of white from roots starting to come through, but not much because they don't have a lot of leaf surface to photosynthesize yet and grow lots of roots. But they'll probably be okay and go through this winter just fine. But here's what I want to do. I want to sacrifice one of these guys. And here's why. We like to see roots. I mean, we want to see these guys, right? Let's just sacrifice one of them. It's going to be okay. This is for educational purposes. This is your Science 101, biology, Plant Biology 101. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right. Now, I know this one didn't have as many roots. It's got enough roots to take a look at, though. Let's kind of get all that off of there. I love doing this. This is the fun part. Look at that. Look at all those roots. You guys want to rinse it out and take a look at it? And there it is, guys. Look at that. All rinsed out. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? I don't know how you feel about it, but I love looking at these roots. And I love how these plants and this biology just all takes place, man. It's just so cool and so interesting. Look at that. A little cutting. For those of you who don't understand plant propagation or you haven't, you've just arrived here and this is the first video that you found and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, it's for you. This is real. This can be done. You can take a cutting of any of these plants and it will grow its own roots, man. It will just turn into its own beautiful plant. You can multiply these things like crazy. I love it. I love it. I love this part of plant propagation. I love all of it, but isn't that just, isn't that just the coolest thing, man? Look at that. All those massive, massive roots, man. So interesting. So cool. So does this guy have a chance of survival? Well, I don't know. It's probably going to be somewhat slim because I just stripped this little guy of all of the bark, all of the medium that it was growing down into, and then washed it with really cold water. It's been out in the air. The roots are starting to dry off. I mean, I could try, but you know, what's the point? I know some of you will get a little upset by that, but like I said, this is for science, guys. This is for educational purposes, but for all you doubters out there, there it is. Isn't that cool? Now, for the rest of these cuttings, I want to show you what I'm going to do to overwinter them because a lot of you guys have been asking me lately, how do I overwinter them? And I do have probably like five or seven different videos about overwintering rooted cuttings in which I actually took the cuttings and I did different techniques and different things and then showed you the results of them a year later and how they did bounce back and they did survive the winter. In fact, one of those videos, I took the cuttings in a flat that I had rooted them in and just stuck them out in the weather and it snowed on them and I showed that and then the next spring those guys started growing like crazy so it's not a big deal as long as they're cold hardy to your area but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these guys right here and what I think you should do to protect your plants through the winter your rooted cuttings 
and this is it. I just want you to take the lid that you already had on top of your tote, and when I tell you to crack the lid, I don't want you to crack the lid, but I want you to just turn it sideways a little bit so that you've got some airflow in through one corner and an airflow out from the other corner. You've got some airflow going on in there. You could even have a little bit at these two corners. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you've got some air going in there and the humidity levels can calm down. We want this to get more acclimated to the outside humidity levels. We want these guys to harden off essentially. So don't take the lid completely off. You want to leave it on and then you also want to do this slowly. So you know these guys are rooted well enough it's not going to be a big issue because they'll be able to take up moisture but you want to just do it a little bit just crack the lid a little bit leave it like that for a couple days then crack it a little more leave it like that for a couple days you could even get to the point where it's like that and you got a big end open maybe right in the middle and you can have air flowing out both sides it doesn't really matter so once you get to this point you want to have this whole setup it's actually pretty well protected the things you want to protect from are harsh winter winds and tons of rain soaking your roots and so really what that means is like a back porch something that's covered and it could even have the sides open but while it's in this it's protecting from the wind so i'm going to leave it in my hoop house here and a lot of people come on here and they say well you don't you know i don't have a hoop house or i don't have a greenhouse but this is not a greenhouse this whole structure i'm inside of it's a hoop house these plants all around me freeze hard as a rock in the winter time it is not heated in here it, the only thing it does is protect from, same this will protect from, the harsh winter winds and massive amounts of rainwater just washing through my roots. It just, it, it creates a controllable environment, that's all. But these cuttings inside of here, these guys will freeze. This soil will freeze hard as a rock through the winter. I'm not worried about that because these plants are cold hardy to my region and they can take those freezing temperatures. The things that hurts the rooted cuttings is not the freezing temperatures as long as they're cold hardy to your area. The things that hurts them are the harsh drying winter winds, letting those guys get dried out and just the wind sucking all the moisture out of them, one, and two, frosts that come really quickly early on in the year some years this isn't a problem but some years you start with like 40 degree temps next thing you know by the weekend it's 20 degrees out you've got massive amounts of frost freezing temps and these guys haven't fully acclimated that'll kill cuttings and i guess one more thing would be the rains if you leave these cuttings out in the rain not all the time i've actually proven that they'll get through the rains just fine with some plants but i don't like the rain to be able to just keep the the rooting medium saturated in there i like to manage it myself i'll come through and i probably will only have to water these guys two times maybe three times max through the entire winter and when i say water i mean run the watering wand over these guys just quickly just enough to keep the soil lightly moistened so that's all you need crack the lid get a little airflow put it on your back porch if you don't have a back porch and you're really worried and you want to protect them even more you can put them in a shed or you can put them in your garage but you don't want to do that until after they've gone dormant and there's some reasons for that. I've made some videos about that. You guys wanna talk about it now? So I like to let my plants go completely dormant for the winter before bringing them inside. Now, not these guys because they're already in the hoop house and I gotta get this side rolled down before it starts getting too cold because the plastic won't stretch in the cold weather. I'm gonna fix that one of these years and we're gonna have roll up sides on this thing. But for my figs and other plants that I wanna bring inside, my rooted cuttings that I wanna bring inside and protect in here from the things that I just mentioned, I like to wait and leave them outside until they go dormant. Here's why. When the cuttings actually have a chance to do what they're naturally supposed to do in nature, once again, I'm not Dr. Seuss, but I sound like them sometimes, they would normally be out in the open, these cuttings, these plants, and they would, gradually start hardening off until you get a couple freezes and then they're completely dormant and they're hardened off. So if you bring those cuttings into an environment like this, which is not heated, but more protected, if you bring them into an environment like this, and I've watched this over the years, they won't harden off as quickly and as fully and completely. I mean, they, they will eventually, but it'll take longer because of this buffer that we've got here. The problem that brings about is if we have a more mild fall 
and they're in here, then they're really taking a long time to harden off. And then when the outside is good to go, and all of a sudden we're in December and we get some really hard freezes fast, in here it's gonna freeze hard as a rock. And those cuttings are a little bit more temperamental because they haven't had a chance to fully harden off yet. So once again, you're in a situation where you've got cuttings going from warmer temps to really freezing temps fast, and that's not good for them. So I like to leave them outside in an area that is going to allow them to acclimate to their environment, that's going to allow them to go dormant, start losing their leaves and all that, then bring them into a protected area. Now that being said, this area in here with this tote inside of this hoop house is so protected that I don't have to worry about that. I'll just leave them in a corner and they'll be just fine. But if you don't have a hoop house, once again, not heated, not a greenhouse, but if you don't have a hoop house, what you would want to do is leave these guys out wherever they're at, under a porch or you know wherever you had them rooting. And then when you want to start acclimating them, you could put them under a porch and crack the lid sideways. You don't want rain filling up your tub there. But leave them in that spot until they go dormant, until I, in every area of the country is going to be different because weather patterns vary. But you'll want to leave them there until you know it's dormancy period. Everything's kind of lost its leaves. Then take them and put them in your shed or your garage if they need that extra protection. And then they'll just get that little bit extra protection when they're already hardy and hardened off to your outside climate, your outside temperatures. Man, that was a mouthful. There I go babbling again. But that's about all I've got to say about that. So there you have it, guys. For those of you who love these hydrangeas as much as I do, another success. We've done it again. I've shown you what I've done. I've told you every little thing that I've done so that hopefully you can go and be successful. But remember, I took these cuttings mid-summer. Actually, we went on vacation a little bit earlier than we normally do down to Oregon. And so I got them earlier. And so this worked out great. Unlike that one video I did where I had to put them on bottom heat and oh, you guys have seen that one. But I'll put a link in the description for those of you who haven't. But if you had to take these guys later in the year, yes, I get this question a lot. You could bring this whole toe inside where it's warmer. As long as you got good proper lighting, plant lighting on top, then the warmth will just get them going and they'll root like crazy and you'll have no problem at all. The only problem is then you're going to have to leave them inside through the winter, keep the lighting, keep the fertilizer. And as long as you're set up for something like that, by all means, have at it. You guys want to have fun growing these things indoors? There's no problem at all. And I might do that with one of these. We'll see. I've got a cool indoor plant light setup that I need to show you guys. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And I want to do some fun things with indoor lighting and indoor growing through the winter. But we'll get to that. And so I'm all wore out and talked out. And that's all I've got to say about that. So I think we're done here. If you guys like this one, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more fantastic gardening videos and if you want to see how these little these little guys right here these little hydrangeas are going to turn out next spring because i'm going to show you i always do have a fantastic week guys and i'll see you in the next video adios